for those of you who missed the meeting this morning, this is what we discussed. Welcome to Trojan Art. My name's Mr. Wing. You're going to get to know me really well through Zoom and other avenues, which I will discuss during this presentation. About me. First of all, before I get into about me, when you're watching Zoom meetings, joining Zoom meetings, or in class, I have a question for you. Did you ever get in trouble, or do you ever get in trouble for doodling in your other classes? Well, you're not going to do that in my class because that's your job in my class to learn how to doodle, to learn how to draw. This is an example of a warm-up exercise from last semester at uh, the previous school that I was teaching. Simple shapes. This is sort of a triangle shape, as is this one here. Notice that there's pencil lines in here. This was inked over, and these notes were added after the fact. So where you see the pencil lines up here, where I wrote the date, and then I decided to ink over it with an ink pen. Uh, this is actually the date that we did this drawing. And then here are some ideas that people talked about in class as to why this little monster is helping this little monster get the cookie jar off the, the uh, top shelf. The other thing that I noted on here, well, George, this guy, is having a sleepover and in the middle of the night decided he wanted a cookie. But he couldn't reach the jar, so Bob invited him to get a sleepover because George has long arms and legs. So this is an example where a doodle from class turned into a conversation, turned into a potential um, children's book story. And I'll get into the children's book idea in a couple of minutes when I discuss projects that I'm currently working on. So please doodle. If, I, if, if you have your uh, video on during a Zoom meeting and your um, head is down, I'm going to assume you're drawing. You could be texting, but I'm not going to assume that. I'm going to assume that you're drawing. Just a fair warning on that. Okay, my experience or about me. Uh, I was a graphic designer for 35 years. Actually, I was a graphic designer for 25 years, uh, but continued to do graphics. Uh, and this is my 10th year teaching. Uh, my graphic arts experience was mostly print. I had several contracts with the Union Tribune, um, probably six or seven different contracts doing temp work, uh, contract work for the Union Tribune, including drawing a few cartoons for various marketing pieces that they did. Uh, I've been a cartoonist for most of my life. I, I actually did do some animation in 1989, when my, the year my son was born. Uh, so I, I have a about a 10-minute animated video that I have on, believe it or not, video cassette, which I still have to uh, see if I can digitize from the video cassette to the uh, to a disc or something or to a, an MP4 file. Uh, I've worked as a graphic supervisor. Uh, the graphic supervision supervision position was for a large trade show house that used to be out in El Cajon. Uh, that business moved up to Los Angeles, and I uh, was laid off shortly before the move. Uh, I've been an art director as a consultant and also as a contractor for various companies in town and also on the East Coast. Uh, I've been a creative director on temporary assignment through an agency called Aquent, Aquent Partners. And now, if you've been looking at this drawing to the right, uh, I'm illustrating my first children's book. So uh, this is a little character that's a dragon, and uh, it's a children's book about bullying and uh, cutting bullies out of your life, and also the bullies have feelings and so forth, too. There may be an underlying issue as to why the bully is a bully. So that's what the book's about. This is the first sketch on the drawing. You'll notice in here that there are still pencil lines in here. You'll hear me say this repeatedly during class. I don't want you to do any erasing. Instead, what we will do when we get to that point is we will either ink directly over the top of it 
or put another piece of paper on top of it and trace it. Or another method that I like to use for certain type of art is uh, transferring from one piece to another. And again, I'll get into all those details later. But if you notice, take a look, close look at this drawing. Notice when I switch the slide, how it changes. So this is completely in pencil. This one is also completely in pencil. All I've done is I've thickened up the lines around it. You can still see, if you look closely, that there are pencil lines in here and in here for shading. So this is a more complete drawing, but I'm actually in the process today of inking over it using a what's called a light table. It's a, it's a board that has lights behind it. And you tape two pieces of uh, paper to it, and you can ink right over the top of it. That way I don't have to erase anything. The reason I'm sharing that with you today is this is the process we're going to be using in class. Um, again, I'm not expecting anyone to have this skill of cartooning, this professional skill. Uh, many of you I have found in uh, teaching at other schools have been drawing your whole life and you probably draw better than this or quite likely draw better than this. Uh, again, this is just an example of a current project. This particular character has been uh, approved by the author and so um, I'm continuing on with that. I've got uh, three or four more other characters including a, a sheepdog and a little girl and I think a cow if I'm not mistaken are, are the, the four main characters in the book. So projects we'll be doing this year. Notice the asterisk down at the bottom it says when we back when we get back to school physically. So when we're in school physically we'll be doing some of these things. In the meantime and beginning this semester, this school year, we are going to be making our own websites. Uh, if you've watched the video and shared your website with me already, great. Uh, but this is the process. I'm going to add something every single day so that you can start adding pages and uh, artwork and so forth to your website. The other things we're going to be doing is making our own sketchbook. Not sure if we can do that before we get back to school or not. Uh, you should be getting some art supplies from the district just simple things like paper, pencil, a little bit thicker paper. You should get some markers and a Sharpie. Uh, you might get a ruler. You might get some tape. Those are just things that we're going to be using in class to create art, uh, or excuse me, using at home to create art. If you have a hole punch, you know, for, for punching holes and putting paper in your um, binder, uh, that's going to come in handy for one of our uh, projects. Ceramics. Found out uh, when I got this job that there's a kiln in at uh, Clark Middle School. So uh, we should be doing ceramics once we get back there. Uh, I've got to find out what all the particulars are as far as how that has all changed with COVID-19. But um, I just started doing ceramics again after not doing any for almost 20 years at my last school. And I've got a couple of really fun assignments that we can do for that. Murals, uh, two year, or excuse me, yeah, two years ago, uh, we did two very large murals at uh, CPMA, which stands for Creative Performing Media Arts Middle School. Uh, we did two very large murals, and the year before, we did a very large mural there as well. So the, there are three murals at that campus that uh, my classrooms and my students are responsible for. T-shirt designs. Love t-shirts. Wear them all the time. Uh, we can, we're going to be doing t-shirt designs and I'm going to show you how you can post your t-shirt designs online and print a shirt and have it sent to your house uh, if you so desire. Same thing with greeting card designs. I'll show you an example in a couple of minutes of my Father's Day card uh, to my dad this year uh, that I actually using this process of drawing, sketching over the top of it, inking up the lines, and then taking it into an online program that's very similar to Photoshop. Uh, color, I colorized it, and then I put it in a page layout program, saved it as a PDF, and shipped it off to a, or uploaded it to a site where I was able to print greeting cards. Uh, you'll probably get something like that in the mail, uh, depending on how I can uh, 
exceeding what my budget is, but um, just as an example of this is real world applicable information. So uh, at the very heart of everything I do, I am a sculptor, I am a, a graphic designer, I'm a, I do ceramics, I've done all kinds of different types of art, but the very basis of what I do and what we're going to be promoting huge in this class is drawing. So, and I am, uh, as I said, uh, the foundation of who I am is I'm a cartoonist. So uh, I do have a good friend who was my college roommate back in the 80s who worked on several animated movies. Uh, he just retired from the animation industry this last summer. So um, I may be able to get an interview with him I think what I'll do is I'll do a Zoom interview with him and have you ask me questions beforehand uh, that you might have of someone that's worked on movies like, um, he worked on The Incredibles, he did all of the buildings and all of the car designs. So for the first Incredibles movie, he designed the Mr. Incredibles car. Uh, he didn't do any costuming or characters, that's not his forte, that's not what he does, but anyway, we'll get into that later too. Down at the bottom where it says your own ideas. If you have a project that you wanna do and the one that we're working on at any given time is something you're not interested in doing because you've already done it, um, I will have you show me examples of things that are similar to what we're doing. And then if you would like to propose an idea that you would like to work on, um, we'll talk about it. And as long as you're following similar guidelines to what I'm teaching in class, um, you can work independently on your own assignments and get credit for them. Okay, so sample websites. Uh, again, I've posted this Google Slides show to Google Classroom. Uh, Jared was that student. Everybody knows one of those students that quote unquote ruined the curve. That doesn't mean anything to you all, but in college, a lot of times, uh, teachers graded on a curve, and the students that excelled ruined the curve for everyone else because they went above and beyond what was asked of them. Uh, I'm gonna click this link just to see what happens because I haven't tested it on here yet. Okay, so this is Jared's website. Feel free to go through it. We're going to be Probably starting next week, we're going to start doing uh, the daily doodle as a warm-up exercise. It's a warm-up exercise that will enable you to start learning the basics of cartooning. Uh, part of your website, I use this as an example because everything that's on here are the kinds of pages and information that are going to be on your website. So, and again, I'll get into that in more detail. Please don't be frightened when you see this, but um, this is what the expectation is going to be. This is going to be your portfolio. Uh, it is primarily for art, but if you want to have other pages on there, this isn't a good example, but if you want to have other pages on there, I can show you how to do pull down menus. So if you want to have one for classes and then have every one of your other classes for artifacts or examples of work in say your English class, science class, uh, history class, math class, etc., if there are examples of different types of art that's where you, we can do a pull down menu. So again, as an example, here's what a Google slideshow looks like embedded in a Google site. And I'm gonna click this button right here to go make it full screen. This triangle is not a video, it's actually a forward button. And again, I'll show you how to do that in a, in a future lesson. I'm gonna click this. Now here's where Jared went above and beyond. Here's his finished drawing for that day. He decided to color it, which a lot of students do. He didn't ink it. But where he went beyond was I made a suggestion to the students to record with their cell phone and upload a video of them listening to and drawing the assignment. So here's what you can expect in my class uh, for a video. And again, an example of someone going above and beyond. This kid was an A++. Uh, he went above and beyond uh, the expectations. I just made the suggestion of recording your drawings and he went for it. So here's what it looks like. You should be able to hear me in the background. So 
So April 27th, this is when it was turned in. He's listening to my drawing, my uh, explanation, and then I'm just going to click through this so that you can watch him draw. Notice how this is a video, but if I want to go full screen on the video, so this is his video, and the cool thing about this is that he's still inside a Google slide and inside uh, a Google site. So all of this is on his website, and all of this stuff is embedded in here. So I'm going to minimize this. Pause, exit full screen. So that's his slide. You can also view it here. This is his slideshow. These are his videos on the left. And as you noticed, I was able to go full screen on his video too. So this is an example. If you can see these details, there's nothing super fantastic about this. This is just a rough sketch, but he's taking the characters and he's starting to think about where they might be in someone's house. You can see the window back here. There's a table with chairs, picture on the wall. Looks like there's a cup of soup or coffee here, maybe a sandwich on the table. And again, these are this is two characters interacting. So one day we did this character, the next day we did this character, just as a warm up drawing. This is a combination of two characters. This one was one day, and then this he's wearing this one as a hat. Again, so this is just an example. Uh, you will have an About Me page on your website, and I'll go into more details on that later. But um, you can have a contact page. I will warn you right now, do not put your home phone number on here. Do not put any sort of schedule on your About Me page of activities that you do where you might be walking to and from someplace, or uh, you might be riding your bike. Um, those kinds of things do not belong on a web page, even though this is a closed environment, meaning these web pages are only viewable to people in San Diego Unified School District that have a sandy.net email address. Um, you're not going to put anything that specific about yourself in your web page. So I'm going to close this out and go back to my slideshow. Okay, this one here, you can look at this one. Well, I'll just tap on it real quick. This was my website for my last school. You'll notice these little arrows. These are pull-down menus. So this page is under all of these ones. I've got a basic landing page that describes what's in the projects or what type of projects you'll be doing. Um, the other type of projects are the daily doodles. So here are examples of some of the daily doodles that you can expect to see if you want to if you want to uh, watch them and, and attempt any of these. You will get credit for them. Notice the dates. This was from right before, or excuse me, right after COVID-19 closed all the schools. So again, I can show you how to do these. What I will have on my website, which by the way is trojanart.com. It's not set up completely yet. But on my website, I'm going to have the periods broken down. And then all of these are links to your websites, or in this case, the websites from those students at Stanley Middle School. And you'll, you'll see not a lot of stuff on a lot of these because um, after COVID-19 shut everything down, people stopped working on things. So if this student did not give me access to his site. So you'll see this too. This will be an, a lesson in how to do that. If you see where it says family guy in the back, this is not okay. What I mean by that is I want your artwork to be your artwork. I'm going to actually show you how to create a masthead. That's what this area up here on top is called. And um, put a graphic in there. I want it to be your work. If he had drawn this family guy, and then colorized it on the computer and put it in here, that would be one thing. But this, he just pulled this off the web and, and, and uh, dropped it in here. But again, we'll get into more of those details later. Uh, this video is kind of getting a little lengthy, so I'm going to shut it down very quickly. 
Anyway, these are just examples. They're on my uh, web page. Excuse me, on my uh, on this Google slide. This is a great quote from C.S. Lewis. He did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and all of the uh, Narnia movies. The task of a modern educator is not to cut down jungles, but to irrigate deserts. So that's my goal for this year, that we irrigate deserts, but don't cut people off. Just remember to breathe. We will get through this together as long as you continue to breathe. That's going to be my new mantra. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing mindfulness exercises or not, uh, but I'm a firm believer in figuring out how to take away anxiety. So for today, just remember to breathe. And obviously I didn't update this. <laughs> this was a template. So I'll put another photo or cartoon in here. This is my website. Let's see if it's working. Nope, not working. Okay. Uh, hopefully that what, what happens is, is if you don't have enough content or enough information on there, it won't... Um, it won't update, but I'll fix that one. Uh, I will have my right address in here and the school's address in here. So what else do we got on here? Is that it? I guess that's it. Okay, so thanks for joining me. Again, I apologize. As you can tell, I do talk a lot, especially when I think no one's listening. Um, and I will put this video on Google Classroom.